Okay, uh, in this video here, I'm going to show you how to rebuild and service a GM throttle body unit. This particular unit's off a 94 uh, 350 throttle body motor in a GMC truck. This is what most of the truck ones look like, more or less. It's a dual air cleaner stud one, but they're all about the same idea. Now, this just comes off the truck very easily. There's one bolt here, one another bolt here, another bolt here. Disconnect the vacuum lines and the linkages, and it comes right off. The only other thing is two fuel lines that go in the back. You'll see them coming up your intake, the feed and the return, both of which unscrew. There's little seals inside, but uh, the new seals will come with the rebuild kit. There's other pieces here. This is your idle air control valve. It's not a sensor. It's actually a little plunger that actually opens and closes to allow air into the throttle body. Because when your truck's idling, your throttle blades here, down those bores, are actually completely closed. So all your idling air comes in through this idle air control valve. This is your throttle position sensor. This reports back to the computer how far your throttle's open from idle to full throttle so it can, you know, to know how much fuel and such to give based on some other parameters. These are your two fuel injectors. These throttle body GM vehicles have two injectors on these V8 motors and some of the V6 motors. I know some of the four cylinder motors only have one, but basically the same idea. Each one of these feeds half the engine. So they're actually pretty big injectors. And they actually just spray into the throttle body here. So it's actually a wet system in the intake. The entire intake manifold has a fuel and air mixture. And inside this little dome right here is your fuel pressure regulator, which is just a spring and a diaphragming C mine that actually started leaking out of nowhere. Now, every one of these are rebuilt. Even if the trucks seem to run okay, they run a lot better after you rebuild them. So, I'll walk you through some okay, of the steps here. It's pretty simple. You're going to need a Torx wrench here. And you should move these screws on top of this injector retaining plate. You get the three screws out that hold the injector hat down. You have to undo these fuel fittings here because it won't come out without doing that. quite leaky. Now inside of this, these are the two fuel injectors. These just come out. There we go. And that is your fuel injector, throttle body fuel injector. You can see there is where the fuel actually atomizes from on the bottom. You have a seal here, this little ring here, which is this color brown with this screen in it. That's where the fuel comes in, and your circuitry actually goes on these two plugs here. Now, a couple of these I pulled apart where these injectors sit. These actually fill with fuel, these bowls here, kind of like a carburetor. They're normally pretty gummed up. Mine is actually very clean, so I'm lucky there. Looks like my problem was just the fact that the regulator is being super leaky. Now, here's the kind of fun part. These four screws hold your regulator in. There is a spring behind these. Let me get the right size Torx. So when you take this apart, make sure the spring doesn't fly across your garage. Yep, it's already trying to come off on me here. The last screw coming out. It's not like a real serious spring. 
So as long as you're aware it's there, you'll be fine. There is the regulator diaphragm. That spring pushes against it at a certain pressure, which maintains your fuel pressure. These throttle body trucks, at least, I don't know what the cars run on, but the trucks, you want to run around 13 PSI of fuel pressure. Now the problem is from the factory, they had a certain window of like 9 to 13 PSI that was considered acceptable. Now, anything other than an ideal pressure, trucks don't run optimal on. We'll get to that in a second. But your first step, now you have it all taken apart, you got to clean all these parts. After that, we get to reassemble it. It's much easier than a carburetor. Anyway, I got everything all cleaned up. See, it's a lot better than it was. Now what I'm putting in is a adjustable fuel pressure regulator from CFM Technologies. Does not come with a new regulator diaphragm. This came in the uh, throttle body rebuild kit, which you're going to need to pick up. It has all the gaskets, one of these in it. And it's pretty straightforward. You take the top of it, this part with the indent in it, and goes like so. Then the kit comes with a new bottom to the regulator, and you reuse your existing spring. So you try and uh, combine the, the two pieces. There you go. Now you want to make sure is that you didn't pinch any of the diaphragm there. That's even all the way around, or else you have a leak. Yeah, you won't be able to regulate fuel very good. Here's what it looks like with the new fancy regulator on it. And then what it comes with is this little thumb screw. Which goes in the bottom like so. So now... You can adjust the pressure. The next step with this, you gotta put it on here, but... As you can see, we have an issue. We gotta drill that hole out right there. Okay, I drilled the hole there. You can see it's pretty much in the center of whatever that thing is. And now, when you put the two pieces together, the adjuster can actually go through. This allows you to adjust it without having to take the whole throttle body apart every time. Okay, now you gotta put the new screens and seals on the injector pulled the old ones off there. This is one of the new screens. Just uh, slides on there more or less. And then these are the seals. seals go around the top once you have them in and you just slide them back in there Get back on it. You put those big O rings around the injector and you reassemble. Now you gotta be very careful tightening this down, this top piece kind of cracks easily if you don't have the injector seated just right. So don't go bearing down on one screw at once until it actually looks like it's going together properly. And that's your uh, completed injector assembly. Nice, clean, new. And you can reinstall the little fuel pressure adjusting screw. Here. Yeah, I got the main throttle body unit here cleaned up. Nothing we're going to do with this. If you want to pull the idle air control valve and clean it, you can. Won't really gain anything, and a lot of times I heard people screw them up by doing that. 
So this is the spacer gasket. This doesn't actually seal anything. It just isolates the injectors from the throttle body unit here. Um, CFM Technologies also sells a bigger spacer, a built aluminum one that will actually raise us up higher. I didn't get it. I might later on. Just got to get this deal down in there. Now it did say in the directions for the regulator that I might have to bend that tube a little bit. Looks like I do. thing to do is reinstall these two fuel adapter fittings. In your kit there should be new little plastic ceiling washers that go on the end of this. There's the old one. There's the new one. Combine the two. Now on the pressure side Another piece of CFM technologies. This little, uh, this actually allows you to measure your fuel pressure. Gauge screws into it. Snug that up. I'm lucky that there's a port right on top. There's two ports to choose from. I take a 1 8 inch pipe thread gauge. And that's that. Your uh, newly rebuilt GM throttle body. Drew and I very hard, especially compared to a carburetor. Even Well, even they aren't hard. But pretty much you just got to take it apart, clean it, put it back together. And even with the modifications, I mean, probably took me half an hour to rebuild it. Not too bad.